What's going on YouTube? Geosnorid here. So in today's video I have some great news coming from this security company here. For those of you waiting for a jailbreak on iOS 14, 14.1, 14.0.1 and stuff like that. So for those of you who felt left behind by the ODC team when they released a 13.7 jailbreak, these news are for you. Pretty good news, so stay tuned. This video is brought to you by Anyfix, a software which allows you to repair the iOS system. Many problems can be fixed with this. You can enter or exit recovery mode or of of course you can fix iTunes synchronization errors. Check it out in the link below. So I took a couple of days off for personal reasons, but I'm back with great news. This company here, Synactive, posted quote, as no details are available yet, our expert HexF4B started investigating one of the free iOS vulnerabilities that are exploited in the wild and fixed by version 14.2. You can read the story in our blog post here. Now for those of you who are unaware, 14.2 is currently the latest version and as I said in many of my previous videos, it's a version to be avoided because this one patches a lot of stuff. Well, some of the things that were patched have been discussed by this company here in a pretty huge post which contains a lot of information. For a security researcher with interests in iOS, this is basically heaven in here. But yeah, let's see exactly what's going on. So they said, quote, iOS one day hunting, uncovering and exploiting CVE 2020 27950 kernel memory leak. So already we know that this is not going to provide TFP0, but there is a problem with TFP0 anyways. As of iOS 14, getting TFP0 is a little bit close to impossible, so we're going to have to find a different way to exploit the kernel for jailbreak purposes. Yes, iOS 13 is way, way different compared to iOS 14 in terms of jailbreaking. We will need some new strategies for the iOS 14 jailbreak, and I'm talking here about the, uh, you know, ODC or the Uncover ones and stuff like that. The check rain, not a lot changes because it uses a bootroom exploit so the kernel can be pawned, and therefore a lot of security features Apple adds are basically just a hurdle that can be passed. So no problem on the check rain side. However, However, with the ODC and the Uncover, we do need actual kernel exploits with read and write privileges, so that's a little bit harder to do. Not impossible, but as of iOS 14, especially 14.2, it's a little bit harder to do. So it's a good idea to stay on 14.1, 14.0.1, 14.0 and avoid 14.2, but I'm pretty sure many of you will tell me that Uncover is basically dead. Well, they don't seem very dead at this point. Yes, they were not tweeting anything for months, but a couple of days ago they posted said this, quote, we're going to release substitute 2.0.0 with unprecedented app loading speeds for uncover and check range jailbreaks from iOS 11 to 14 using newly designed tweak injection system that allows loading a big number of tweaks for ultimate customization with minimal overhead very soon. So while they're not working on uncover for iOS 13.7 by the looks of it, uncover is still stuck at 13.5 while Odyssey supports basically 13.7 and lower, they seem to be focusing on the substitute which is basically their tweak injection mechanism. Pretty cool, it means that the team hasn't abandoned the uncover yet. Well, what has been described in here is definitely usable for a jailbreak, but not alone. We still need TFP0 or something that can grant us kernel read and write privileges. While this is something interesting and can be chained, it's a kernel memory leak, it's unfortunately not all we need. It's not that kind of exploit that Google Project Zero drops and we can take it and use it in a jailbreak with no problem. It's still a very good talk though, and it does actually actually uncover a very important vulnerability that has been circulating in the wild for a while. It has been used for a while to, you know, attack iOS users, but it hasn't been described like this before. So pretty good, I'm definitely sure that this can indeed be used for a jailbreak if chained, but we still need another one. Now of course iOS 14.2 does patch a lot of vulnerabilities. This one in here is only one of them, and possibly one of the weak ones. But yeah, this one in here is pretty good. They say, quote, back in the beginning of November, Project Zero announced that Apple has patched a full chain of vulnerabilities that were actively exploited in the wild. This chain consists in three vulnerabilities, a user land remote code execution in font parser, as well as a memory leak and a type confusion in the kernel. In this blog post, we describe how we identified and exploited the kernel memory leak. So just from this message in here, we know that there is also an RCE in user land, a vulnerability that hasn't been demoed in here, and also a kernel type confusion, which also wasn't demonstrated here. So another two vulnerabilities that we know exist, but haven't been demonstrated. So iOS 14 looks 
looks pretty good. We start to get vulnerabilities at this point, which is actually great because we do need public vulnerabilities for these jailbreaks to be updated. However, yes, the vulnerability that has been released, it's a kernel one, so definitely a powerful one, but it's not enough for a jailbreak. However, we are on the right track because vulnerabilities made publicly available means that we can start working on a jailbreak faster. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. I am GS. Now, till the next time, subscribe to stay updated and peace out.